हेलो फ्रेंड्स आई होप यू ऑल मस्ट बी गुड एंड हेल्दी सो इन द लास्ट लेक्चर आई एक्सप्लेन यू दैट वेन एवर यू हैव अ स्टैटिक फील्ड सो यू कैन ऑलवेज सी अ प्रेशर स्टैटिक फील्ड यू हैव यू कैन ऑलवेज सी अ प्रेशर फील्ड एग्जिस्टिंग देयर सो हाउ टू डिवेलप द एक्सप्रेशन फॉर दैट प्रेशर फील्ड और हाउ प्रेशर वेरीज इन स्टैटिक एक्सटेंट ऑफ फ्लूड और इन अदर वर्ड्स हाउ टू डिराइव द फंडामेंटल इक्वेशन और द गवर्निंग इक्वेशन ऑफ हाइड्रोस्टैटिक इज द टॉपिक ऑफ दिस पर्टिकुलर लेक्चर so to do that job let us consider a volume a uh, volume which is taken which is though a finite and taken from the bulk extent of the fluid so uh, let us say that uh, this particular volume uh, is uh, v and the bounding surface of this volume is having an area a okay so the surface area is a and the v is the uh, volume of this finite fluid element so to derive the things first thing first is let us say that uh, x vector is the body force vector body force vector per unit mass so this is the body force vector per unit mass okay which is extend, which is acting on each and every part of this particular fluid element uh, so the body force which is uh, there can be written as this body force acting on this whole fluid element can be written after doing a simple exercise so you consider a small volume dv okay and in this small volume let us say that the density of fluid be rho okay then <coughs> uh, the mass of this fluid element will then be rho dv so the body force acting on this particular mass will be rho dv times x vector so the total body force will be the volumetric integration and this will be the net body force acting on this fluid mass okay now what about the surface force so consider a small surface element da on the surface of this fluid element and uh, this is the unit normal vector of this particular element so the area vector will be eta da so the pressure force acting on this fluid element will be then equal to p times eta da but as the pressure is always compressive in nature so this is minus p eta da okay so this is the force surface force acting on the small elementals uh, surface element so the total surface force acting will be equal to the integration of p eta da with a negative sign okay so what about the equilibrium of this fluid element so for the equilibrium of this fluid element the uh, net uh, force acting should be zero so that means sigma fb plus sigma fs sorry uh, fb vector plus fs vector should be zero okay so <coughs> now replace the values of fb and fs so this will be the volumetric integration of rho dv x vector minus the surface integral this is over the whole surface area the surface integral of minus p eta da and this will be zero now what we can do is we can use gauss divergence theorem to convert this uh, area integral into volumetric integral so that we can combine them two and then can get a fruitful result so if we apply the gauss divergence theorem on to the second integral that is area integral so it okay so this line is already outside so this becomes the volume integral and and gradient of pressure time dv and that will be zero okay now <clears throat> so if we combine these two then we can write minus gradient of pressure dv as zero now this is true for any finite or infinitesimal fluid element because the integral of this part is zero means this has to be zero itself therefore rho x vector minus gradient of p will be zero or in other words gradient of p should be equal to rho 
x vector so this is the governing equation or the fundamental equation of hydrostatic so now consider a simple case that is uh, of uh, gravity as the body force so if i consider gravity as the body force so how can i write this x vector this can be written as so consider this coordinates this is x axis this is y axis and this axis is z and this is the body um, body force vector x which is nothing but the gravity vector so that is nothing but minus local acceleration due to gravity times the unit vector in the direction of z so this is 0 i 0 j minus g k y minus because g is acting in the opposite direction of z and what is nebula this nebula or del operator is uh, del by del x i plus del by del y j plus del by del z k now the nebula is basically tells you about the maximum change of any property in uh, in any particular direction so the total change of any property is the total maximum change is, uh, is uh, uh, explained by this term nebula so if we operate uh, this uh, del operator on pressure so we will be getting i del p by del x plus j del p by del y plus k del p by del z and that is equal to 0 so no sorry that is not equal to 0 that is equal to rho x vector and this is the one so this is mm, 0 i 0 j minus rho g k so from here you can also see it that del p by del x which is also equal to del p by del y in this particular case and they both are 0 that simply means pressure when you have gravity as the body force in static expense of fluid then pressure does not depends on x and y coordinate that means that if you let us say that this is a pool of water okay and uh, you are at this particular sorry so this is what happened okay if uh, you are at uh, this particular level okay if you are at this level okay and uh, you are trying to uh, move uh, this is x direction this is your y direction and this is your z direction so if you are moving on this particular horizontal plane then you won't be finding any variation in pressure that simply means when gravity is the only body force and you are talking of a static expense of fluid then the variation of pressure in any horizontal plane doesn't exist so uh, and if you compare the second one so that will give you how pressure is varying in that static expense of fluid that is it varies only in the vertical direction now this uh, as um, p is independent of x and y so p has to be depending on z only so this is what this equation says so there is no need of writing partial anymore so this can be written as ordinary derivative of rho g okay now this becomes the variation of pressure in a static expense of fluid and this can only be solved once you know that how density p is behaving with respect to this height z so if density doesn't change then this becomes a very simple thing if density changes then we have to consider that particular case so let us consider a simple case where density is not changing that is for incompressible incompressible fluid so for incompressible fluid you all know density is more or less a constant so if this is the case then dp can be written as minus rho g dz and once integrated it becomes minus rho g z plus a constant this is because density is behaving as a constant in this particular case so consider that um, you are fixing your axis this is your x axis this is your sorry this is your x axis this is your y axis and this is z axis so you already know that pressure doesn't vary in any horizontal plane so with respect to x and y there will not be any variation in pressure pressure will only be varying in z direction so consider this is the free surface uh, at a distance of z naught from the base okay where 
the pressure is atmospheric and you are required to find out the pressure at a distance of z from the base okay what is the pressure here so for this you have now a boundary condition that is when z is equal to z naught the pressure is atmospheric therefore you can write this as atmospheric pressure is equal to minus rho g z naught plus constant so if you subtract equation 2 from equation 1 you will be getting p minus p atmospheric is equal to minus rho g z plus rho g z naught on further solving this particular equation uh, you will be getting that p is equal to p atmospheric plus rho g z naught minus z now <coughs> people do what they always try to measure the uh, pressure at a certain depth that means from the field surface how much if we move down so this should be the pressure or what is the pressure at this particular depth so depth or depression is the what we normally look for rather than uh, moving from bottom we always move from top so if i if the question is that what should be the pressure at a depth of h so what is h here h is nothing but z naught minus z so replace the value so pressure in axis of atmospheric pressure so that will be p minus p atmospheric that is also called as gauge pressure rho g h therefore the variation of pressure is always a linear so if you try to plot this gauge pressure gauge what is gauge pressure i will be explaining this in great detail in the next chapter so for the time being it just remember that it is the pressure above atmospheric pressure so that is this difference so if you plot it you will be able to find that gauge pressure here is zero and as you moving down this is varying linearly so the variation of pressure so the pressure variation in static fluid for constant density is linear and it is linearly increasing so as we move down in a fluid the pressure increases linearly so in this particular lecture you have seen that how to derive the fundamental or the governing equation of hydrostatics that is gradient of pressure is equal to rho x vector this is also having a very important consequence so let me explain that particular consequence also that what is the consequence of this particular equation so what you have seen that gradient of pressure is equal to rho and uh, rho x vector and if gravity is the one so it is rho g vector now you consider uh, sorry you consider the free surface of water this is the free surface of water now this free surface is at any particular pressure which is atmospheric pressure okay now if you come down to another um, uh, so this is how the gravity vector acts that means the constant pressure lines in uh, this static fluid will align themselves such that they will be normal to the uh, they will be in the uh, they will be normal to g vector or their maximum variation in pressure will act in the g direction so that's why the free surface of water for static fluid is always horizontal so this can also be understood from this particular equation so friends in this lecture till this point only in the next in the le next lecture i will be discussing with you about uh, the variation of pressure for uh, compressible fluids that is when the fluid is considered as non-isothermal and what will happen if it is isothermal okay thank you very much if you liked my video please do share like and subscribe thank you very much take care